Okay friends, welcome to the class on capital allocation and performance measurement. Uh, this is a part of the audio series for FRM part 2. Uh, in this vid video, we are going to look at uh, RAROC, the economic capital, uh, capital charges and some of the things related to capital allocation and performance measurement. So we are going to look at application of RAROC approach to non-loan product and some uh, modification in the RAROC project. So what is RAROC? RAROC stands for Risk Adjusted Return on Capital and it is a measure essentially to integrate risk management. Its main function is to relate the return of capital to the riskiness of the firm investment. The measure promotes a consistent and uh, unbiased way to measure performance and provide necessary information to support risk and return decisions. So how do we define that? So economic capital is, is the first term that we should look at. Economic capital and then we'll come to RAROC. So economic capital provides protection against risk, that is the unexpected losses. It furnishes an institution's uh, various stakeholders with a degree of confidence that the uh, investment funds are safe. It's important to distinguish economic capital and reserves. Firm set aside reserves in preparation for the expected loss. Economic capital is designed to provide a cushion against unexpected loss at a specified confidence level. So, the reserves are for expected loss and the economic capital is for unexpected loss. The confidence level at which economic capital is set can be viewed as the probability that the firm will be able to absorb losses over a risk period. For example, if a bank set uh, its economic capital at 95% confidence interval, there are 95% chances that the actual losses will be less than the economic capital and uh, only 5% chances that we are going to exceed that. So uh, it's cost prohibitive for a financial institute to operate at a 100% confidence level because uh, without taking risk we cannot get any reward so it's uh, just about optimization the amount of regulatory capital that the bank is required to hold is determined by regulatory guidelines which is designed to assure there is sufficient capital in the banking system the economic capital held by most financial institutions exceeds the requirement amount of regulatory capital so economic capital is also important from the perspective of firm shareholder the amount of economic capital that a firm holds and the allocation of economic capital among its business line have a profound effect on business and overall performance let's move ahead and look at the computation of raroc and uh, interpret raroc for loan performance and also for uh, business unit performance the necessary amount of economic capital is a function of credit risk, market risk and operation risk. The RAROC for loan can be defined as risk adjusted return divided by the risk adjusted capital. So suppose uh, the relationship between economic capital and RAROC where uh, we have a 100 million loan with the following assumption that the expected loss is 100 BP and the economic capital is 8 million. That is the economic capital required. So the unexpected loss at the high confidence interval for this loan is the worst case war minus the expected loss into the loan amount. So the ROC for this uh, loan is the risk adjusted return divided by the risk adjusted capital. So economic capital as we can see on 100 million is 8 million. So that would be the economic capital and the unexpected loss which is uh, the loss that the chances of this loss happening is less but it's uh, revenues minus expected loss minus expenses plus economic capital plus minus transfer price so this is the RAROC I am repeating on the top we have revenues minus expected loss minus expenses plus return on e economic capital the money that you are going to get on that plus minus transfer price so the numerator of RAROC equation includes the gross, gross revenue from the loan less uh, the expected loss and other loan expenses. Economic capital is often invested in high quality liquid assets so that the return on investment economic capital must be added to the expected loan revenue. So there are, uh, are uh, adjustments for operating revenue or expenses associated with the loan which we can put on the numerator. So 
so we generally take uh, the return and we remove the expected loss because of course expected loss is uh, going to happen and we divide it by the uh, economic capital that we have set aside so that, that's how we work around with that so now we are going to understand the capital attributed to uh, market risk and credit risk and operation risk so market risk is the risk of loss as a result of change in market risk factor credit risk the risk of with the changes in factor that affect the credit quality of an asset an operation risk is the risk of the due to factors that lead an operational failure such as human error technology change computer crashes and regulatory changes so many banks at least at the very least measure and manage risk in three categories the major source of market risk is the interest rate risk is called the gap risk the risk inherent in mismatch between bank's interest rate sensitive assets and its interest rate liability so gap risk and other type of market risk must be considered when structuring the loss distribution in an RO, RAROC computation now we have capital attributed to market risk which uh, which is the capital that we are going to attribute to take care of the market risk so RAROC capital allocation for market risk involves attribution RAROC in terms of the amount of risk in computation of value at risk RAROC market risk changes are often made on the basis of unused market risk limits and excess over these limits for example var estimate as a specified confidence interval and we have a formula that has uh, that is about market risk capital charge and it has got three functions the first function is a constant that adjusts for daily event risk which is not captured in war the second multiplier is used to determine the charge for unused portion of war limit the third is multiplied use uh, a multiplier used to determine the charge for exceeding the war limit mm -hmm. so in, in a way we can also reconstruct the formula for market risk capital charge using a max function which is uh, Uh, max of war limit minus war or zero and uh, that's how this formula is built up so if war limit is not exceeded there is a charge for the unused portion of the limit and the third term is zero now capital attributed to credit risk the process used to attribute capital to credit risk employs a standardized capital factor which expresses the amount of credit risk as a function of uh, rating and maturity at a given rating the capital factor increases as maturity increases similarly at a given maturity the capital factor increases as the credit quality decreases the credit capital charge for a credit risk is determined as credit risk capital charge into capital factor into market value of the position capital factors may be obtained from rating agencies or by using proprietary external models such as kmv or publicly available models such as credit metrics then we have the capital attributed to operation risk So relative to the market and credit risk operation risk is the most uh, difficult to measure while many sophisticated banks have developed sound measures for quantifying market and credit risk operation risk remains more of an art than a science So this is a major concern because operation risk often represent enormous potential loss to financial institution success in applying war concepts to operation has been limited because the internal data points are usually too few to build necessary loss distribution Another simple procedure of allocating operation is to assign operation risk rating to a business line or a transaction based on factors that lead to operation risk, operation losses. Example: people, processes, and technology. Firm-wide operation risk capital can be allocated to individual business or product based on ranking of their operation risk. Now, how does capital for a non-loan product works? So, in addition to standard loan, many banks offer other products to which capital must be allocated in doing so it is useful to think of the risk of these products in term of their loan equivalent the general approach for allocating raroc for non loan products is simply to multiply their loan equivalent by the standardized capital factor then we have the first and the second generation raroc many banks use the raroc approach to allocate economic capital by calculating raroc for a business unit or product or comparing it to the present raroc hurdle rate The argument for using this methodology is that only projects provide an RROC above the hurdle rate make a positive contribution to the shareholders where unfortunately this approach can lead to decisions that decrease shareholder worth 
And there's the tradition RARC, which is also known as the first generation RARC, the RARC for a business is compared to firm's cost of equity. The, if the RARC exceeds the cost of equity, then it's concluded that the business adds value to the firm. The flaw in the first generation RROC is its assumption that default probability of riskier asset remains constant. The assumption is inconsistent uh, with a constant expected return on the firm's equity because in order uh, for the probability of default to remain constant, the firm return of equity must change. Likewise, if the return on the firm's equity remains constant, the probability of default must, must change. So we have a second generation RAROC methodology that has been developed to overcome the inherent problems with the first generation approach. The main goal of the second generation methodology is to assign the risk of business with the risk of firm's equity. Under the second generation approach, an adjusted RAROC is computed uh, by subtracting risk-free rate from it and dividing it by the systematic risk of firm's equity. So an investment will decrease in uh, shareholders. Uh, Adjusted RAROC if it exceeds the difference between market return and the risk free rate which is often uh, referred as market risk premium thus the decision to accept uh, RAROC is whether when uh, uh, the adjusted RAROC is greater than this spread which is the risk free uh, which is the market minus the risk free rate return. So that was all about the RAROC thank you for listening to this audio class and best of luck with your exam.